Good evening and uh, welcome to our uh, event tonight as uh, we announce 313 units of affordable housing on Roosevelt Island. Uh, I'm council member Ben Kalos and uh, if you read about it on patch or got an email from me or otherwise let us know. Uh, these applications are due Monday, July 6th, so we wanted to make sure we got this out to you. Half of the apartments must go to residents of Community Board 8. So if you live between 59th and 96th, between 5th Avenue to the East River and of course Roosevelt Island, uh, you have a 50% shot of getting in because half those units are set aside. Um, and I, I wanna give a special thank you to David Kramer at Hudson Related and the entire team at Hudson Related for working with us and, and doing this great event uh, just for you. Um, in addition to this, um, I want to make sure that if you haven't already had a chance to read about it in the New York Times, uh, back in 2017, I actually authored a law that became law in 2018 and is just finally going into effect. And uh, what this is, is I realized that um, I'm not sure if we can necessarily build our way out of the affordable housing crisis, especially since so much of our city is already built. And so the idea is what if we could recapture all the affordable housing that's hidden in every nook and cranny in our city and make it available in one place uh, and uh, start making sure that those re-rentals uh, are available so you're not just forced to fight over lotteries for new units um, because 300 units like this don't come around every day. Uh, and so uh, that became a law, it's called Local Law 64. And starting actually tomorrow, uh, you'll be able to visit the New York City Housing Connect 2.0. It was created by my law. And there will be 2,500 affordable re-rentals coming onto the market this summer. Um, and uh, one other key piece that I'm pretty proud of is that we've been able to support the construction or preservation of more than a thousand units of affordable housing right here in my district. Last year, we preserved more than 600 affordable housing uh, apartments at Roosevelt Landings. In addition, we cut the ribbon on 28 units of affordable housing along with a preschool at 1768 uh, 2nd Avenue, which is literally across the street from my office. I can see it from here. Uh, and uh, in 2018, we cut the ribbon on new affordable housing develops in my district for a total of 49 new units, including two supportive housing buildings for the formerly homeless uh, one of which is for women and children built across the street from where I live. Uh, and so uh, with these 313 new affordable units, we want to make sure that we made them available for everyone who is interested. And uh, we're, we're hoping tonight that we can uh, give you uh, a little tour of it. Uh, and uh, we, we have uh, the, the buildings called uh, Riverwalk Park. Uh, it will be on Housing Connect until July 6th. It'll be on the Housing Connect, I believe, 1.0 uh, website. Uh, tonight we have Jeremy Harrison and Natalie Molinado from Hudson Related who will show us the building and explain how to apply. They'll then be able to answer questions. We already see some of the questions uh, coming in on the Q&A feature. I also want to make sure we thank tonight's representatives from Housing and Preservation Department and New York City Housing Development Corporation. Uh, and. Uh, we're just looking forward to it. Now, in terms of uh, uh, pieces, you can submit your questions in the question log. Uh, you can also raise your hand and uh, we'll do our best to uh, call on you. If you have a question that does not get answered tonight, you can uh, email me at bkalos at benkalos.com to get your question answered. Also, if it's just a question you don't feel like the entire world knowing, uh, and then full disclosure, as you may already know, uh, this is on Zoom. We've got uh, about 75 people watching as we speak. Uh, we also have folks on Facebook. If you're watching on Facebook and you wanna participate in the Zoom, uh, please feel free to join us. If you already RSVP'd, you can get the uh, RSVP link. It is in your email. Uh, it might be in your spam folder. Uh, just search for an email from uh, at benkalos.com. And so I'd like to now turn it over to uh, Hudson Related. Great, thank you. Um, were you guys able to upload my um, presentation that you sent over? We will get that up live. Fine, no, my Jeremy will get it shared. Great, thank you. 
Yeah, while that uploads, I can speak a, a little bit. Um, you can go to our website, liveriverwalkpark.com, and there is a redirect to Housing Connect for easy access if and folks want to go on and apply right after this presentation today. Um, and additionally, uh, at the end of the presentation, I'll leave an email address for, for Ben's, to Ben's point, where if there are questions you wanna ask that you do not wanna ask on the Zoom, you can email us directly, and we'd be happy to follow up individually um, from myself or Natalie from Related. Great, thank you. Yep. So if everyone can see this, uh, you have a little bit of a snapshot here of our building in beautiful Roosevelt Island. If you roll to the next screen, so this is a snapshot of the apartments that will be rented via the lottery and the additional preferences that come with um, the community. So there is a 5% mobility preference of units that are set aside for individuals that have a mobility impairment. 2% for of the departments to set aside for folks with a visual hearing impairment. And then, like Ben said, 50% are reserved for members of Manhattan Community Board 8. And there's an also an additional preference of 5% of the units for municipal employees. Um, just to give a quick overview of the anticipated timeline, um, the deadline is July 6th to apply, which you can go on at any time and apply on Housing Connect. Um, what happens after the July 6th deadline, there is some time in between when paper applications will be submitted into Housing Connect. That's anticipated for some time between mid to late July. Once all of the applications are submitted into Housing Connect, Connect, the lottery applications are then randomized. And that creates a lottery log number. And then looking at probably around early August to mid-August is then when we'll start bringing in, you know, applicants based on those preferences above, starting with the mobility preference, the visual hearing preference, 50% community board, municipal, and there's a general New York City preference. I wanted to go over to the next slide. So how you can apply. Uh, applying online is really easy through newyorkcity.gov backslash housing connect. But like I said, you can actually go directly to liveriverwalkpark.com. And in the top right corner of our website, there's a, uh, there's a field that says apply now on Housing Connect. And that'll give you easy access to redirect, to apply and set up a username and profile. For individuals that do not have the ability to apply online, you can request an application by mail by sending a self-addressed envelope to Riverwalk Park Affordable Housing Group 330 West 30th Street, New York, New York, 10001. Please though, do not send in a request for a paper application and apply online. Only apply once as duplicate applications may be disqualified. And again, the application deadline is July 6th, so um, the easiest way to apply now would be on you know, Housing Connect. I'm gonna go over to the next slide. And so here's a, some renderings of our beautiful apartments. So all of our apartment homes, regardless of AMI and apartment type, all come with beautiful stainless steel, state-of-the-art appliances, hardwood floors, marble backsplash in the kitchen, tile marble bathroom, subway tiled shower, and triple view medicine cabinets. Most apartment homes will have a view of the East River. And these are all the renderings of some of our sample units. I believe um, if everyone did RSVP with an email address, we can also send out sample virtual tours that you can take a look at each unit type virtually. Um, in the next slide, we have some pictures of our model units. So not every apartment home will come with the island kitchen. So there are select floor plans for studios, one bedrooms and three bedrooms, 
that will have the option for you to have a state-of-the-art kitchen with marbled countertop. Um, and this gives you some ideas on how you can design the space. So it's all usable square footage and is all efficiently designed um, with tons of sunlight and um, energy efficient PTEC units for essential heating and air conditioning. We'll go to the next slide. And then our amenities. So with Related and Hudson, we always include tons of amenities in our offerings with our apartment homes. So within our communities, we have an attended lobby, a fitness center with a yoga studio, a riverfront terrace, children's playroom, party lounge, laundry room, game room. There'll be additional bike storage available. And there is an additional cost for the amenities, but it is based on the AMI apartment that you'd be eligible for. So for our 40% and 50% AMI apartments, it would only be $7 per month. For our 80% to 130% AMI apartment homes, it's only $20 per month. And then for our 165% apartment homes, only $30 per month to access all these beautiful amenities. If we can go over to the next slide. Here is a look at our AMIs by household size. So it's really important for applicants when they, you can look on our website, like in liveriverwalkpark.com, and then also in the advertisement through Haas and Connect, you'll be able to see the number of units that are available if you're looking from left to right. You can see the studio, the monthly rent, the number of units, and then the maximum, the minimum and maximum income bands based on the household size. So the first slide here shows our number of units that are studio, one bedroom, two bedroom, and three bedroom apartment homes from 40% to 80% uh, AMI. So it's good to know and important to know when you go to apply, look how many folks will be living with you in the apartment and then look and see where that corresponds with the corresponding rent price and combined household income. And it is possible to be eligible for multiple apartment homes. So if you are eligible for a studio and a one bedroom, for example, you know, when there is availability that applies, we'll always try to match you with your first preference if the units are available, if you're eligible for multiple apartments. So the next slide will have the additional income bands, the maximum incomes from our 130% AMI apartment homes to our 165%. So what's really nice with a 300 plus units, Ben was referencing is that this is 100% affordable uh, across multiple income brackets. So it's very rare that there is a lot of 100% rent stabilized buildings where a lot of New York City is typically 80-20 you know, market rate. So um, that's something that's really important to related and Hudson companies that we have mixed income workforce housing available for multiple income brackets. If you want to go to the next slide. And this is what to expect after you apply. Um, we will reach out to applicants um, to request supporting documentation. And we will send a notice to applicants to gauge the affirmation of interest after they apply. Uh, depending on the number of applicants there are, it may be time, it may be some time before we get to your lottery log number. Uh, and so we will reach out to gauge your interest. We anticipate move-ins to be from early September into April or so. Once we do reach your lottery log number, we will um, contact you based on your preferred method of contact, either email or regular mail, and in your preferred language. So there is a contact method in language preference indicated on the application, whether you apply on Housing Connect or you submit a paper application. So we will provide at least one electronic option and one in-person option to drop off income documentation uh, to gauge eligibility. So some of the information that will be required is listed here based on the nature of the employment. So some of the things we may request are copies of the last six most recent pay stubs, W-2, uh, copies of signed and completed federal tax returns. Um, if there is any cash income, proof of cash payments, and bank statements. Uh, if anyone is self-employed or freelance, we've indicated some of the additional documentation we require here. And then additional, um, if there's additional income for benefits, uh, like social security, benef veterans benefits, income from rental properties, public assistance, it's important to see 
the combined income for your whole household, and then start to collect the income documentation um, as early as you can so that when we do reach out to you either via email or we reach out via mail based on your preferred method that you are you know, ready and able to um, provide the, the income documentation. I'm gonna go to the next slide. So this is the website that I, rent, I mentioned, liveriverwalkpark.com. From in there, in the top right corner, again, um, there was a redirect to House and Connect. And if there is additional questions, we're happy to open that up and answer them here, as we can see some of those coming in. But again, if there was questions that you did not wanna ask in this forum, or you wanted to set up where a time for myself or Natalie from Related could talk to you one-on-one, -on -one, then this email here, rwpinquiries at related.com would be the best way for us to answer those questions, but we're happy to answer as many of those as we can um, right now. Thank you very much. We're gonna stop the share, so make sure to get those. Uh, if you missed it, it will be posted on Facebook where you can watch this whole thing over again in case you missed anything. So uh, we've stopped that share. And uh, now we're gonna get into the uh, Q and A, and uh, we have about 22 questions. And it looks like uh, five of them have already been answered. Uh, and uh, we will uh, just jump right in. So a number of them have been put in. Uh, give me one second and let's see how we can do this. So we've just unmuted Danielle. Uh, who asked the first uh, three questions. And if you want to ask them verbally, feel free to uh, ask. You should be able to uh, ask your question. Hello. Um, uh, there wasn't a field to inform the unit size. You kind of answered already this question. Um, but when we will be able to choose the the, the size of the unit size, is it after the lottery or, or before? Yeah, great question. So it would be after the lottery. So once the, lo the lottery randomizes the application log and provides a lottery log number, from there, once everyone has their lottery log number, we would start to bring people in in order of their log number based on those early preferences as well that I mentioned in the first slide that would be contacted first. Once each individual is fully eligible and qualified from the income documentation and we see that you're eligible for an apartment, then we would ideally offer you, if they were available, every apartment you would be eligible for um, based on availability. So if you were lottery log number one and you were eligible for a studio on a one bedroom and a two bedroom and you preferred you know, one bedroom and both were available, we would offer that to you based um, after the income documentation is processed. Great. And you had an additional question relating to what happens if your income increases? Yes, yes. Also, if uh, we get the lottery and we get the apartment, but our annual household income increases, what happens? So if, um, if your income increases before we reach you or after you move in? Uh, can, you, can you say in, on both situations for me, please? <laughs> so if, you, if there is a change to your income before we reach your lottery log number, um, then we will reach out to you to submit the documentation and you can let us know beforehand. Um, but after move-in, it'll be based on the area mean income for the apartment. You may have to recertify your income each year, but may not result, won't necessarily result in losing your apartment if that's the question. Usually most people are concerned about that they're penalized for making you know, more money over time. But what will happen? Uh, the price is adjusted for the, the rent? So the rent will be based on the rent guidelines board percentage increases uh, every year. So each year in June, there's a vote and recently just had 
won this past year for um, 0% increase on a one-year lease and a 1% increase on the second year for a two-year lease. That would, that would set the rent increases, not uh, your income. Oh, yes, I'm going to add to that. So income does not affect the rent. And that's my colleague, Natalie, for everyone. <laughs> okay, and just uh, uh, my last question is, um, I just received an uh, email with a PDF talking about a tour, a virtual tour, but the links are not working. Just like letting you know, because I was uh, curious about the floor plan of the units. Oh, thank you. We can look into that. It might be the browser, but I can definitely look in and make sure and, you know, recirculate that to you. Thank you very much. Thank you for the presentation. Thank you. Okay. Uh, thank you very much. Give us one moment. Okay. Uh, next we have a, uh, I have so many questions, give me one second, sorry. Uh, we have a question from an anonymous attendee uh, and they ask, I read that a luxury building's low income residents are not treated the same as others. Is that true? So no, so we treat um, everyone, uh, everyone equally. So there is no difference in uh, how we would treat low income or the moderate income in, as far as the processing of income documentation and the valuation. Okay, next one, hold on. We're gonna see if they can ask. Uh, we received a, a question relating to whether or not these units are rent regulated or rent controlled. I believe you, you touched on that. Yes, yep, they're all uh, rent stabilized. Uh, an, an, an anonymous attendee asked, what is the square footage of the studios and what is the square footage of the one bedroom? Uh, they do range. Uh, the median square footage is a, a little over 400 for the studios and just over 500 for the one bedrooms um, and the two bedrooms just over 700 and 900 for the three bedrooms. Uh, give me one moment. We're going to call on somebody to ask their question. So we're calling on Tom. He had a question about, uh, can I unmute correctly? You, you are unmuted if you want to ask your question. Good, I comb my hair for nothing. Um, yeah, if you're on furlough uh, due to COVID-19, how does that affect the paper that you have to uh, submit? For example, we've been on furlough for three months. So is that in any way taken into consideration or anything? That can be taken. Um, yep, sorry, go ahead, Natalie. We would have to see um, when we called you in what the situation is at that time. Um, you do have to be income eligible at time of moving. Um, so you would have to provide any documentation you have. We'll review it um, thoroughly and you know ask any questions that we need to clarify anything um, to see if you're going to start or when you're going to start. So we'll need, need more information at, at that time. We are now calling on Daphne, who had some questions that she typed and has her hand raised. You are unmuted. Uh, Daphne, you are unmuted. We should be able to hear you. We are not able to hear Daphne, but she asked, how close is your building uh, to public transportation and what types of transportation. Uh, if, if I may jump in on this one because it's quite the gold mine. Uh, you, you have three different forms of transportation, actually now four. Uh, so exactly where the building is located, you will be able to walk, I'm guessing about 100 feet 
to get on the F train to go to Queens or Manhattan, which does connect with the Q quite conveniently. Uh, you also can take the tram, uh, which is also, I'd say, about 200 feet away. And uh, if you don't want to take uh, land to get to work that day, you can also take uh, the ferry, which we were able to secure during my term. And the city council, that ferry will take you uh, from Roosevelt Island, I think one stop in Queens, and then you're at 30th Street and then Wall Street. Uh, for a quick ride downtown and a scenic ride. Uh, and uh, last but not least, we just brought City Bike to Roosevelt Island, so you can always take a City Bike off the island uh, if you're interested. Uh, how are my numbers? Did I get them right, or am I off by 50 feet here or there? Good, good. very good. Yeah, only place you can go land, air, by sea. Uh, we've unmuted Ellen Diamond, who has a question. Actually, I had four questions, but... If you want to ask all four, it's all yours. Thank you. Uh, I'm mobility challenged and wondered whether there's a discount available for disabled folks. So there, there isn't a, a discount for the unit, but you do have um, the preference available. Uh, I did see the, the two other questions you did have as well. Um, and so there is, once we do reach your lottery log number, we will have the option to come in person to do a tour. Um, we will also have the option for virtual tours as well, but, um, we'll base that on individuals, personal preference, given the, you know, the state of the world right now. And then your question was, uh, how many times may you refuse an apartment if you were, um, eligible? Is that the, the question? Yeah. Yes. Yeah. So... You would have the, um, you would be offered um, two apartments to be able to choose from. Um, so you would have two, two chances. And that's it. So once we refuse those two, forget about it, basically. That's correct. Yeah, we would have to move to the, the next person on the, um, the next lottery log number. Okay, I have one more question that's maybe not appropriate for other people, but I have to sell my apartment before I could move. And so I can only estimate my income based on the sales price. I mean, I have all the other information, but I don't know how much uh, I would be making after the reverse mortgage was taken out. So um, I'm just wondering how that would work. So you would have in income information up to the point of my selling my apartment. Has this ever come up for other people? So it does come up. Um, Natalie, are you on for this one? Yes, can you repeat it? I'm sorry. Sure. I have to sell my apartment before I can move. I also have a reverse mortgage, which will be deducted from the sales price. I can only estimate uh, how much the apartment will, will sell for. So I can't give you a complete... Uh, picture of my the money in the bank because I don't know how much I will gain from the sale of the apartment. I have all the other income information that you need. Yeah, so for that, if you're working with somebody, a professional um, that's helping you sell and can provide that information, that's what we would request um, or we'll do some research on it. So an estimate given by a professional person who's helping me would suffice. Yeah. Okay, thank you mm -hmm. very, very much. Thank you. You're welcome. Along those same lines, we had an anonymous question about whether or not there are asset limits. Yes, so there are asset limits. Um, the limit is the maximum four-person household limit for the AMI you are eligible for. So if you are eligible, let's say, for a 40%, it's the 40% maximum for a four-person household. Um, and then it would be the same for any of the other AMI. Thank you. 
another question that was submitted anonymously is why can't we use our income after taxes? This difference would put me in the lower tax bracket for the price of rent and make a significant difference in affordability. So we have to follow our program guidelines um, and the we also follow the HUD handbook and it, we use the gross because of that. So net is not applicable. Uh, another question is, how does the community board aid preference work? Is it applied on the lottery? Is there a separate pool for those residents? So you are flagged. When you apply um, on Housing Connect, you put in your address and it's flagged as community board. We do confirm um, when you come in, if you are still at the address and if it's, the, it's we confirm that it's community board aid. Uh, we have a follow-up question about the asset limits. Where can somebody find the asset limits? You can actually see them on the ad. Um, if you just look at the four-person maximum for any of the AMIs, that is what um, we apply. Uh, the, the questions keep rolling in, and they're all very good questions. Uh, I'm going to uh, call on Kira, who had a question. Hi, Ben. Hi, Kira. You would you could share your question. Um, okay, so I was wondering, due to like COVID nineteen, um, I've been hit with unemployment. And one of the, and I noticed on the Riverwalk website that it says under income, unemployment compensation counts towards that. So I'm wondering how do I fulfill the requirement for the documentation that says I have to submit um, my last six paychecks when my last six paychecks were in the form of my unemployment benefits? So for unemployment, you can just um, go onto the unemployment website and print out the payment history, and that is sufficient. Oh, okay, that's awesome and simple. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you. Uh, we'll now call on S. Bibbins for their question. And we know that there are uh, questions coming in on Facebook, and we're going to try to get to the folks on the Zoom before we get to the uh, questions on. Uh, and so uh, we're asking S. Bibbins to unmute, but we're not getting it. So I'll just ask the question, which is, how many different layouts is there for the three bedroom? Uh, do tenants have the option to choose from layouts, or is it pre-assigned by the realtor? So it's a great question. So you will be able to. Um, we will be able to provide floor plans for the layouts. So typically what we would do is ask, you know, what would be most important to you, whether it's view, space, um, and that we would be able to offer you based on those preferences, um, the layout that would fit your personal preference. Uh, we have a question from Carolyn Carr. We've asked Carolyn to unmute. Just need you to accept the unmute request. Hello. Hello. Hi, Carolyn, if you want to ask your question. <laughs> yes, um, thank you so much um, for the facilitators and the host. I'm really learning a whole lot. But my question is, um, do these apartment rentals include utilities? Because that to me is um, kind of a deal breaker, <laughs> just processing this information. Yes, yeah, a great question. So the rent includes um, gas for heating. And then the tenant is responsible for electricity and cooking gas. Thank you. Uh, we have a number of anonymous questions. Uh, sorry, we have a question from uh, Carmen about missing the beginning. You can uh, see the replay. You can even watch the replay right now on Facebook. It's facebook.com slash bedkalos slash live. Uh, the next anonymous, the next question is submitted anonymously. If someone lives in a co-op but they can't afford their maintenance, can they apply? 
we welcome uh, everyone, everyone to apply. The next question also submitted anonymously, are these units affordable for life or does the program end when the tax break ends, for example, 20 or 40 years from now? Great question. Uh, so most of the units are permanently rent stabilized. Great. So, so that, that is, so, so 100 years from now, if you're still alive, it's still going to be regulated? It, it should be, yes. <laughs> I, I, it's, it's scary to plan on those types of terms. Yeah. Um, we have a question from uh, Carmen about uh, why, why only five days before the deadline. And uh, I, I, that, that one is on my office. When we uh, learned about the opportunity, we wanted to uh, make sure we let everybody know. Hudson Related had engaged in marketing, uh, and uh, I think they can talk about their ad campaign. Uh, and so we just wanted to make sure that we amplified a lot of the great work they did. But so just quick question to, to us related and, and uh, to HPD or HCC, just how, how did you promote this, uh, this housing opportunity uh, to folks? Yep, so we had a number of marketing initiatives and they're still ongoing. We've advertised um, digitally. We've advertised in um, a number of newspapers, um, one of the local ones, Our Town, um, which we've done in a series of email blasts um, and inquiries as well. Um, so yeah, I'm sorry to see that you're just hearing about it now. The more the, more the merrier, the more we can do. Um, we have an anonymous question. Some, uh, somebody has an income question. They teach and have a small incorporated business that's a service business involving acting, writing, and medical schools. Business is way down because of coronavirus, so there will be a real income fluctuation this year. What do I do? So we still encourage you to apply. Um, like I stated earlier, we will have to, uh, when we call you in, review your documents um, and see where you are at that point. You will, of course, need to income qualify, but um, for self-employed, you know, I'm not sure how you file your tax returns, but if you consider yourself self-employed, um, it is compared with your prior years. Um, so we would just, you know, at that time review it. And there was a similar income fluctuation question. So it's out, uh, so I just checked that off. I have two questions. One is folks are really looking for a specific asset limit. Uh, so uh, if you can share what the asset limit is on the 130% AMI, for a studio or one bedroom. And while somebody is looking that up, I'll ask a follow-up question, uh, which is, uh, can, can documents be submitted online? Yes, we are doing um, submissions online. And the asset limit for the 130 is 147,810. Thank you. Uh, we have a question from uh, Tom who previously asked questions, which was just, what if you're currently temporarily living outside of New York City? How does that affect your, your lottery chances? Can you apply? So, impact? so we always encourage you to apply, um, but there is a New York City preference. So we do have to process um, those applications first. Uh, Susan asks about the monthly fees and income uh, grid, uh, what is the link for them to find it? I believe you have a, a web page that people can go visit. Yes, if they go to liveriverwalkpark.com. Perfection. We have a question from a, uh, an anonymous question. How much extra is gas electric per month on average? That's a great question. Um, I'm not sure. It is an energy efficient building, um, but yeah, I'm not sure to give an exact dollar amount. Uh, we have a, a question about the timeline. I will turn it over to Valerie to ask her question. Hi, thank you. Um, so I was just wondering, I believe somebody touched on this earlier, but I had um, 
it sounded like my audio was messing up. Could you please elaborate on the timeline specifically? Um, when will lottery numbers be selected and when will those individuals be contacted to, to move forward with uh, required documents? Yep, yeah, so great question. So we expect the, the first applicants with the lowest log number based on the preferences to start roughly in August to September. But it really does depend on what the ultimate lottery log number is. You know, it can go up until April, uh, April of next year is when we anticipate most of the movements to incur. Um, as far as when the applications are randomized, we anticipate that to be around the end of July or so. Thank you. And I know folks have been asking to see the numbers again, so just going to pop them up for a moment, but you again can find it and I'll share the slide that has the uh, place where you can actually download it so you don't have to just pause your video. So again, you can visit Riverwalk Park, live riverwalkpark.com. Next question is, would special, would special needs trust SNTs qualify as income? So we would ask you to provide um, the trust agreement and according to whether you have access or not, um, we will count it or not. Uh, the next question is, uh, is there someone in your office who can help fill out the application? Unfortunately, no, we don't um, offer that. I, I, I would say that if you need help filling out the application, feel free to reach out to me uh, and one of our uh, graduate students in social work can help you. Uh, and you can just email bkalos at benkalos.com. Uh, you can call me, 212-860-1950, and we will have somebody work with you and work with Hudson Related and help you get that application filled out. Next question, are green card holders eligible to apply? Yes. Uh, another question from Carolyn, is the first and last month rent required and what about security deposit? So at least I mean we will request um, first month's rent security deposit and background fee if it applies. Uh, we have a question from S. Bibbins. Is already living in affordable housing, does that impact chances of getting accepted? No. Um, it, it all has to do with your lottery log. We, of course, have to interview and log number order um, in addition to preference order. Uh, Another anonymous question, do the apartments have central air and washing washers and dryers? So all of our um, air conditioning heating are done through the same P-TECH unit, which you can uh, program. And we have a laundry room available, uh, but each unit does not have a washer and dryer. There is also a drop-off service directly across the street from our building. Does the asset limit include your checking and savings account? Yes, it does. Um, for saving, it's the current value, and for checking, it's the six month average. If your family size changes a year or so after you move into the apartment, could you change to a bigger unit? Yes, we would have a transfer list. Um, you would add yourself to the transfer list. And when we have a bigger unit, we will contact you um, to come in and submit your documents. If you own a co-op but you can't continue to live there because the maintenance is too high, is the value of that co-op counted when calculating assets and or income? Yes, um, that is an asset and it is counted. Do you need to show the exact income by July 6th as income filing now extended to July 15th? And I just heard about this today. I need to figure out many things. So I think the big question is, do they need to have all their documents and their income figured out by July, 5th, July 6th? Or can they just apply if they know that they fit into one of the different bands? 
Correct. The, you can just apply. Um, that's the July sixth date is the date for the deadline. Um, the deadline date for the application. However, you will be submitting um, updated documentation when we call you in once we start processing. Okay. Um, it appears that we've gone uh, through about sixty-two questions on the uh, Zoom. We're now going to head over to Facebook. Uh, so uh, my staff is curating some of these. Uh, one question is, uh, uh, how do you confirm your application was received? If you submit it through Housing Connect, um, it would say that it was received. Um, if it's a paper application, um, that is not entered until after um, the deadline, and then you will receive communication with your log number. Okay, uh, we have a question from S Stephen Cavaliero. It seems uh, to ask on each Housing Connect your income from assets, but there isn't a place to list the value of those assets. Does that have an impact on consideration? So is the... I don't believe so, I, if I understand the question correctly, is that there is income earned from the assets but nowhere to list it on the application? Um, I, think, I think so. Okay, I, I think for that one, if you could submit that to RWP inquiries, we can help um, with that further, I believe. How many total applications have been made uh, to the lottery? How many from Community Board 8 and how many from Roosevelt Island? It's a great question. Uh, I don't have those numbers um, right now until the lottery list is closed. We are uh, just getting wrapping up. We're getting close to seven o'clock. Uh, we got a handful of new submissions on Zoom and we'll circle back to Facebook. Uh, the next question is from S. Bibbins. Is there parking for residents? So there is a parking garage on the building, but it's, it's not managed and operated by related. It's a third party. There is um, street parking available on Roosevelt Island, but no parking at the building. A follow-up question, if you don't, does not, does your, if you do not file with an exact income by July 6, will it have an impact on your lottery number? They weren't clear in the response you provided. Um, if I'm understanding right, um, you, you have to apply by July 6 to be considered. You don't have to have your tax returns filed by July 6, if that's the question. I, I think they just, so I think just to clarify, I think what they wanted to hear is uh, don't worry if you are in between any of these bands. So, so ju just to clarify, the reason I wrote Local Law 64 and why we're rolling out the new Housing Connect is the idea is that you would uh, pre-certify in, you would get your income checked, you would file all your documents, and that way you'd know exactly what you are applying for. Um, this is probably one of the last big uh, affordable housing lotteries that will be held uh, with 300 units where everyone just puts in their applications and hopes that their application is the right number. Uh, and so uh, it's not a perfect system, but for now just uh, er error on applying. Uh, I also just want to thank Henry on Facebook. He just applied, so I'm hoping a number of you uh, can and, and will and have. Uh, also, we, we're still getting a lot of questions anonymously. There's about eight minutes left, but uh, it's more fun when other people ask the questions. Uh, we have a senior who's 74 years old, has a savings account that includes retirement savings that they must live on. The savings account would bring the assets above the stated limit. What can a senior do then? If it's an actual retirement um, account, it's actually not counted towards the limit. 
we, we are getting a lot of questions about the asset limit. Uh, if you can remind folks where they can find the table to look up the maximum assets allowed. You can look at the um, ad and it's always going to be the four person maximum for that AMI. Got it. So I'm actually just going to pull this out for people so that we can just answer all these questions once and for all because I think it's been something that folks have been a lot of questions about. So we, we have this sheet. It's not as pretty as it was on the uh, document, but uh, here we go. So for 40% AMI, the maximum assets would be for which number of people? It'd be for four people. So the maximum assets would be uh, 45,480 if you're in the 40% AMI band? Correct. And if you are in the 50% AMI band, the maximum assets would be 56,850? Correct. And for the 80% AMI band, the maximum assets would be 90,960. Uh, for the 130% AMI, that is 147,810. And uh, for the 165, uh, that would be 187,605. And I, I, this, this is not Hudson related's fault. This is actually federal policy, but only in New York City could somebody with $187,605 in the bank liquid be considered uh, in need of affordable housing. Um, but is that, that is accurate. You could have up to 187,605. Uh, the, we, we have a question, hold on, we started getting questions from people, so we will uh, stop the share. Uh, we got, so Carmen uh, indicated that they're having an error message. Uh, and it says that they, a, a user with your name already exists. So uh, Carmen, if you email bkalos at benkalos.com, we will have somebody in our office work directly with you on HPD to get you through uh, working through Housing Connect. Uh, we have a question. Let me call on Ellen Diamond to ask her question. Yeah, I'm sorry, this feels like... Sorry, I, I was muting you, unmuting you as you got unmuted by somebody else. Hold on. Okay, can you hear me? We can, sorry about the uh, clicking, muting you by mistake. That's quite all right. Uh, this sounds like a really dumb question to me, but how do I know which AMI band I'm in? Because I've never heard that term before. So those are the minimum and maximum income limits. Um, we just saw the ad on there. So if you know where your what your gross income is annually, um, you yes. So you can look at this um, chart and see where your income lands. It has to be in between the minimum and the maximum. Okay, that's just as that. So I don't need to worry about what AMI band I'm in. I look at my how many there are of me and what my annual household income is right so if you look at your household size and the income of the household then you can figure out which ami you will um qualify for uh, um i have to figure that out so, no you don't you, we you don't have to figure it out um but that's how you will know which one it is okay I just but we will we review your income and assets and we let you, let you know. Okay, all right, thank you. So, so if, you're, if you are a, a single person making $55,000 a year, uh, then um, that would likely put you in the 80% AMI band uh, for a studio or one bedroom. 
And the piece that you would care about is the fact that there's eight studios available, 13 one bedroom. So you'd be looking at uh, 21 units that you'd be uh, applying for. If there were two people in your household and both people made 50,000, then you would be in the 130% AMI category, uh, which goes from 54,000 to 118,000. And you could be looking at a uh, studio one bedroom or two bedroom. You lost me at hello. <laughs> Uh, feel free to reach out to our office, 212-860-1950. We will uh, walk, you, walk you through it together. Thank you. Uh, next question uh, submitted anonymously is, what is the deadline for hard copy applications? So yeah, that's a great question. Right now, uh, July 6th right now is the application for um, all to apply. And so does that mean it has to be postmarked by July 6th? It has to be received by July 6th? Postmarked. Great distinction, Ben. Thank you. Uh, the person who asked about the retirement account said that it is not an actual retirement account. It is a savings account. Uh, so does that count against the asset limit? Yes, it will. Uh, that there's a question about the max assets being out of line for New York City. Is that something which someday can be addressed at the Fed level for New Yorkers? Absolutely. Feel free to reach out to our Congress member, uh, Carolyn Maloney, uh, and uh, happy to connect you with her office. Uh, the low max assets are kind of prejudicial for Manhattan residents over 50 years of age. Um, and uh, I think that is something that a number of people have shared. Uh, Carmen asks, is the email bkalos at bencalos.com? And that is correct. Uh, and we're actually at the seven, seven o'clock hour. So we're going to just try to breeze through the last five. And uh, if, if you didn't get to ask the question, feel free to email bkalos at bencalos. And then they've also provided their email address. Uh, the person asked if they make 31000 a year and they are a single parent with a child, uh, where would they go? Um, and, and so, uh, so, so yeah, the, the question is, and I'll just share the sheet. Uh, so the person makes 31000 a year and they are a, a single person with a child, so that would be a two-person household. Would they be in the 40% AMI band or the 50% AMI band? They, 31 for two person household would be 40%. Okay, uh, there is your answer. I'm sorry, let me elaborate. Um, if that can be um, a one bedroom at 40, but if you look, if you're interested in a studio, a two person studio, at 50 um, will also qualify at 31,000. Okay, we got some thank yous. Uh, we, we, uh, we've got some folks who are gonna apply. Uh, uh, Carolyn Carr is asking for a, a video on how to apply on Housing Connect, and so just email our office, we'll get it to you. Uh, lots of thank yous. Um, and so I guess a last question. Uh, is a retirement account considered an asset if you are not collecting from it? A retirement account is considered an asset. However, the balance in the account will not be considered against the asset limit if it's a retirement account. Okay. Um, I want to thank Hudson Related. I want to thank HPD and HDC for joining us. I want to thank uh, everyone who's on 
the Zoom call. Uh, uh, we've gone through about 80 questions. We have more than 70 folks on the call, plus everyone watching on uh, Facebook. I want to thank the folks on Facebook who've been with us all night. Uh, and if you didn't get all of your questions answered, uh, let me just see if I can share the last slide on the deck so that folks can uh, reach out and get the final information, which I think folks want. So give me one second, I'll just pop that up so that you can reach out to them. This is our first time doing a, a webcast version of this. We usually do a regular share. So I hope we did okay. So um, this is the uh, information. If you, uh, oh my. So if you, if you are interested in applying, you can go to liveriverwalkpark.com you have additional questions about this particular development, uh, please email rwpinquiries at related.com. Uh, if you have questions about Housing Connect uh, or having or applying for affordable housing generally or using the new Housing Connect that's launching tomorrow, please email bkalos at benkalos.com. We are here for you. Uh, whether it's the thousand units of affordable housing we've already gotten in the pipeline, uh, or the 2,500 coming online this summer. Uh, we're doing our best to make it affordable to live in the city, unit by unit, uh, block by block. So I just want to thank everyone. Again, Tots and Related, HPD, HDC, Roosevelt Island Operating Corporation, uh, and just everyone involved. I also want to thank my staff, and uh, I'm actually going to go uh, vote on our city's budget. So thank you very much.